We're here with Paul Gelb, Vice President, Mobile Practice Lead, Razorfish, just off the stage at the IAB Mobile Marketplace event. Thank you so much for being here. The IAB just released some statistics showing that marketers aren't often utilizing media and creative agencies when executing mobile campaigns, but yet when they do, they're highly satisfied with the experience. So I'm wondering what you think is going on. Well, I would say, you know, in our experience, we're doing mobile for almost all of our clients right now. So I don't have that many that much experience with at least our clients that aren't using us for mobile. Um, that that being said, I would say mobile is the hardest thing to do right now in, in digital. It's a smaller screen, which makes uh, it much more difficult. As I think Mark Twain said, it would be shorter if I had more time. Um, as well, it's just a lot of different technology components to actually be able to execute on a pretty capability poor. Uh, device. So um, I, I think the, the, the brands that aren't using experts or people who have experience to do it well um, are, are probably less satisfied than those who actually leverage that expertise. Um, in mobile, we found that when you put a lot of talent into it, that you invest in, in the right people to do it the right way, uh, it's night and day as far as the performance. So we found that with our clients. Great. And what, when marketers come to you, what are they asking for? Uh, they ask for a lot of different things and it, it, sometimes it has to do with what uh, a lot of the industry trades or the New York Times is, is reporting about. Um, what I think we've done a fairly good job about it is taking a, a step back and, and not starting with a solution. But when, when we ask them for things of what they want, it's not do you want an app or do you want a site or do you want a media campaign, it's you know, what is the consumer insight that you have really found and that you want to tap into? And, and what uh, are your business objectives and, and metrics that you're looking for? And, and overall, what is the experience that we could communicate now as an experience um, that uh, you could do in, in a way that you can never have done before? And, and we start with those three, and, and the solution normally uh, comes about through filtering through that, because there's so much that you could do on mobile um, that when we filter it through that, three things we could actually figure out what's the best thing to do in the short term versus the long term. Is there anything that they're asking for solutions for that you're not able to provide? Um, uh, a holy grail easy uh, money mint um, and that that doesn't uh, really exist. So I would say um, th there's some issues with, with the measurement uh, on mobile web that, that still exists uh, where cookies are not supported that uh, in that instance, we, we definitely show them some options in mobile apps that allow for that sort of measurement. Uh, there's some uh, attribution that they're looking for when it's across channels, um, and, and that is still a, sort of a work in, in progress, especially uh, when we're driving people to store and, and figuring out when an ad actually drove that, that analog purchase or action um, is it, still a bit difficult. But, uh, you know, we. we clearly define what we can measure and what we want to measure and are continually uh, checking off the list and getting better at, at, at filling out all those things that they need. How big of an issue is device fragmentation in your practice? Uh, it's, it's not a, as large of an issue as people make it out to be where it's not preventive or cost prohibitive. Um, if you even look at websites today, there are sometimes 25 versions of a website that have to be done because there are different uh, browsers, different operating systems that all have to be you know, checked and, and done differently. Um, so with the scale that we're seeing now and the amount of value that we're getting out of it, it's not cost prohibitive. I would say on the internal side for our teams to keep them up to date with the new operating systems and how and devices and how fast uh, the space is, is moving. I mean, two years ago, you really weren't talking about tablet at all. Um, so the, the internal knowledge flow and education process, um, as well as just educating our client on trends, is, is probably the biggest difficulty. Uh, but the execution is still um, extremely manageable. If you, do you have a wish list at all of what you would like publishers um, and ad networks to give you to make your work easier, to meet marketers' goals better? Um, well, one, I would say that, that we are looking for some flexibility to do custom executions to really allow us to uh, leverage some of the, the real capabilities of the device and, and leverage our creative in ways that, that aren't too restricted. So supporting a lot of the, the rich media ad units is, is a very big deal for us. Um, second is, is to uh, 
figure out new ways and, and opportunities to, to target and to provide contacts for uh, our users, whether that is being able to target by Wi-Fi in an office building and, and so we can hit people up uh, at their business meetings you know, before everyone arrives. Um, so just taking what, what we need and, and at least being flexible enough to, to execute on it as well as reaching out to us and saying, you know, what can we do better? What are your biggest needs? And, and having that be integrated into their own uh, product roadmap and offering roadmap. Do you normally, when do you decide to go to an ad network and when do you decide to go to a publisher? Um, once we have the, the, the sort of brief and, and the needs for, of the client, um, it, it depends. There are times when we are planning mobile web and, and some other um, executions where it's going across it and, and that winds up being part of, of the RFP that we're sending out uh, for the web. Um, there are other times where uh, the need is, is more about some of the, the targeting components and, and certain scale and uh, certain flighting. And in that case, you know, we will often send out to a couple of, of large premium uh, publishers that we've had uh, a lot of success with as well as some ad networks and evaluate their responses. and, and basically you know see what the positives and negatives are each there's no sort of holy grail how do you integrate mobile into a multi-screen campaign it seems like you're probably there in the beginning at razorfish since all of your clients are doing mobile so how do you make sure the creative and the measurement all of it has a good synergy with the brand um, it depends on the brand and, and the campaign I mean there are times when our, our hands are tied and, and we're really brought in at the end and, and have to make do um, what I, I will say is that more and more we're doing the media and the creative and and that way at the front those teams are working together so the context and the plan of where it, it actually is going to show up is really well aligned with uh, the the ad creative um, there are other times where we just have a really great mobile concept or experience that we think uh, really fits the goals of the campaign as far as the message they're trying to communicate and who they're trying to reach. And in, in those instances and in the work that we're doing now and it's currently being planned, they're actually driving the creative and messaging the rest of the campaign, these experiences on mobile. And, and I think we're seeing that on social too where these highly experiential components are becoming the hub and, and the focus and that experience is then being uh, expanded to the other channels. How do you, what, what aspects, be it user behavior, marketer goals, measurement, go into deciding if you're gonna do a browser-based app, just a web-optimized site, a downloadable app, or you know, an in-app or mobile web ad campaign? Uh, so I, I would say that increasingly it's not or, but it's all, and it's sort of a, a when. Uh, and what are you gonna do first? Um, and, and that really has to do with, with the goals and, and the content as well as their technology infrastructure and what they can do. There's a lot of stuff that we want to do, but people just from a, a back-end technology component uh, don't have the capabilities to do it, and, and, and sometimes we work around, sometimes we don't. So it really is custom. I mean, there are uh, major publishers that we've actually designed their mobile-optimized tablet site uh, or their iPad app, and in, in that case, um, you know, we were deciding on, on what we were doing based on their content. And there was a lot of media and, and constantly sw swatching, swapping out um, a lot of content and video content, HTML5 made sense. There was you know, another instance with a retailer where some components of what we wanted to offer was only native app and, and that was really valuable to their consumers, but we had the entire uh, commerce capabilities on mobile web already, so we uh, actually just brought that component of, of shopping in HTML5 into the app, so it was sort of a, a mix of the two. So again, it, we really focus on, on individual clients and not saying that there's uh, a standardized way, but making sure that we're aligning with what we do with an ROI at the end of the day that they're trying to reach. Great, thank you very much. Right, thank you. Custom, I mean, there are...